Hi everyone, Heat Thinny Buzz Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new John Carpenter album, Lost Themes. Director, screenwriter, producer, and soundtrack composer, John Carpenter. Not a commercial selling pop or rock artist, but his music has touched the ears of countless people anyway through his many soundtrack compositions. For movies like Escape from New York and The Fog and Prince of Darkness, as well as the Halloween 1, 2, and 3 trilogy. Halloween 1 being one of the most infamous and significant horror movie soundtracks of all time. And on these soundtracks, especially Halloween 1, John was building on the foundation laid by synthesizer-led progressive electronic artists of the 1970s, but was trying to hone a chilling, eerie, horror-centric vibe to fit the tone of the films he was soundtracking. And now, after decades of being a world-renowned director and screenwriter as well as film soundtrack composer, we now have this new new album here of non-soundtrack material. The first collection of tracks like this in John Carpenter's discography. And from what I understand on this album, John creates the music here in his home setup. He collaborates with his son as well as Daniel Davies, who provided music for the I, Frankenstein soundtrack. So if you've heard John's previous work and you just look at the title of this record, you can pretty much figure out what you're getting into here. The tracks on this album are lost in that they don't really have any images or narrative or action or anything to guide them. In a sense, they are just kind of naked, bare, lonely songs. But given that the tracks are instrumental and they are written and performed in John's trademark style, they do kind of sound like the theme to something. There are moments when I'm listening to this record and in my head I just see the opening montage that starts a television show and I'm just seeing actors turn and their names just appear under their face as they have just like a longing gaze into the camera. We have nine original tracks here that span just over 40 minutes. A lot of the tracks on this record are moody and cinematic and evocative. They feature pulsating rhythmic synthesizer sequences, ethereal piano chords, and high-pitched synth leads with a lot of reverb on them, wailing keyboard and guitar solos. Give a listen to the opening track on this record, Vortex, which to me is proof that John can sort of thrive and, and create the music that he makes uh, really well in the digital age. I do miss hearing more analog synthesizers in the mix. I do miss that sort of warm tape sound that I'm sure he used to make his old recordings. But much of the time I think the same kind of magic carries over. Like on the closing track here, Night, which has lots of gurgling bass lines and kind of warbly wavy guitars. It's chilling, it's dark. It's nocturnal. I dig the song Fallen as well, which has these really grand melodies that seem like they would be really fit for like a sci-fi epic. And this track has a really grand finish too. There's a second half where all of a sudden the, the music makes a, a sudden shift and all of a sudden there's a lot of intensity and momentum here, like we're getting some action happening. Even though there aren't any visuals to accompany these songs, it certainly feels like John is soundtracking an idea or there is at least some kind of progression here that is complementing some kind of unmentioned storytelling. We get this image of how the song begins, and then all of a sudden there's this occurrence, and the music just really takes off. That's most definitely the case here for the longest song on the record, Obsidian, going over eight minutes in length. But this is one of the songs on the record where I think the cleaner, plainer, drier digital aesthetic of John's music on, on this album just weakens his compositions a little bit. The drums are kind of thin, the bass isn't as heavy, the, the lead melodies, the high-pitched melodies don't really have that textured feel I love to hear in his music. They just sound super clean. I still enjoy the composition of the track, though, the writing, though I don't really think the, the fake organs toward the end of this track or anywhere on this album really do John any favors. These fake organs also show up on the track Domain, which has a, a really upbeat rhythm to the the track it's uh it's it's really lively and i'm i'm just not totally sure how he wanted this track to sound just the way the instrumentation comes together on this track it just feels so small it feels so featherweight and it feels kind of corny it doesn't really have that 
heavy, chilling vibe that I love to hear from a, a John Carpenter track. This song sounds like the theme song to a bad soap opera set in Transylvania, and everybody's like either a vampire or a werewolf or something. But it is still undoubtedly a show I would watch. Still though, I think this newer aesthetic, this newer recording or whatever you want to call it, uh, continues to weaken some other songs here like Mystery, which I don't think sounds nearly as devilish as the melodies on this track sound like they should be. I could really go into each track just talking about how I like the composition, but, but really just consistently, if a thorn does show up in the side of these songs, it's just that because the way they're recorded or the quality of the effects or the quality of the, the sound of these synthesizers, it just leaves John's compositions just sounding smaller than usual. They don't have that large, vast, horrifying aura surrounding them. I feel like in a lot of ways we're, we're kind of hearing what John would write before they were treated to extensive post-production just to make them sound bigger and bigger. Still though, all in all, I do think this is a pretty good progressive synthesizer, progressive electronic album. It's not reinventing the wheel, but it is a reminder of how good the genre could be in the modern age. And on top of that, I think it's an essential listen for anybody who is a fan of this style and specifically a fan of John's. I'm feeling a decent to strong seven on this LP, transition. If you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, John Carpenter, Lost Themes, forever.